Welcome to episode 41 of Crave the Book. In today's episode, Amber and I cover chapters 99 through 104 of Tracy Wolf's Crush. And we are nearing the end. Um, this episode, we cover the first encounter with the unkillable beast and all of the conflict that takes place in the unkillable beast's cave. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, it's episode 41. And I don't I don't know why I sound so happy, Amber. It's not a good episode. It's a sad episode. It is, but it's also like probably one of the most exciting. It yeah, like, it's sessions. exciting in a sad way. Like things they 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 leave Catman for the first time. I know. They finally left the isolation of the like an entire book that took place literally in indoors a white a white atmosphere with nothing to describe except snow and dead trees <laughs> yes very very um very monochrome mhm yeah but um so we 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 get some we're going to get some fun because grace and the gang are heading to the unkillable beasts island um, road trip road trip dragon trip <laughs> Like, I really hope they like they made a playlist, got some snacks. No, they just yelled <laughs> over the wind the entire time, trying to make a <laughs> make a plan. Each other. They texted <laughs> each other like when I was in your basement texting you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you up yet? Will yeah, you awake? <laughs> awake, laying in bed. Yeah. Um. So, I had. Not on this read, but on my my first reread because this will be my third time reading this. Um, I also did not get that they were going to a like volcano with a crater. For some reason, my brain just eliminated that from the story, and it was just a tropical island with a cave. Yeah, I didn't I didn't remember that at all, and then I just went, "What? Yeah, and was, wait, I don't." I didn't. I don't picture it like an actual like tall, like volcano. I'm picturing it as more of like like a big crater because an inactive volcano can have like life within it. You know, it can be a big, just hole. Um, so I, I'm kind of still picturing the island vibe. Probably not picturing it as accurately as it was described because from how how Tracy described it, it sounds like a big cereal bowl with trees in it. Yeah. And so I think we confused ourselves and just jumped straight in. But for anybody that has not been in any of our episodes before, oh, there crap. is a certain sound that you do need to look, like listen out for. And I will do this very, very quickly because we're clearly in a swing of it. And we're just so <laughs> excited to do it. today's episode that we forgot entirely about any structure. You know what, we've um, done how many of these? We've done 41 of these and I forgot to do the spoiler warning. Yeah. So, <laughs> so guys... Um, this, this need, this, I think this one needs to be a very sad howl. Can we do a sad howl? Um, <sighs> if, if I do, it'll be right here. <laughs> okay. So today you need to listen out for the howl. That means that everything beforehand was about the chapters that we have discussed today, which is chapters 99 to 104. I think. Yes. Um, stopping at chapter 105. And everything after the hell will be a spoiler. I have put some court spoilers in, so if you have not read ahead to then, leave. Leave. <laughs> Just leave. Get out. Just leave. Um, because we don't want to ruin any surprises. Um, the other thing is, I thought that Tracy did an announcement today, and I've been looking everywhere. She did it a couple days ago. Was, it's chapter... Maybe I was wrong. No, it's chapter 23 from Charm was released. I already read it. Um, I'll send it. <gasps> oh, and you didn't send it to me? I tagged you in the post. I thought you might have seen it. No, no. worst friend. I'll, I'll send it. It's Teen Vogue did um, did an interview with Tracy. It's a really cute chapter. It, it gives us a little bit of a peek into what Charm is going to be. And so far, what I've gathered is that they are basically just trapped in she she said the shadow realm of which is what grace's mind is when they're both trapped in her gargoyle it's not like they're just trapped in the gargoyle apparently they are trapped in the shadow realm but it is oh. it's hudson's lair within that shadow realm and it is just grace and hudson and the best part about it was like 
we're back to the snark. We're back to Grace, like, absolutely hating him. And she does the whole, like, I'm going to tape a line across the room and you don't cross this line. And he's like, but what about the bathroom? She's like, okay, the bathroom is fine. The bathroom's neutral territory. And then he's like, but the books are on your side. And she's like, I guess they are on my side. <laughs> it's just so... It's, Holding them ransom. Yeah, it's it's so petty, but I'm so excited because that was my favorite thing about... Um, about crush was just the tension of them bickering like I i'll admit once we got to court and they were absolutely you know fine with each other we'll just say it leave Lushy. it yeah the, the, it's it, it's not the constant fighting um I, it's almost like it lost the allure because i preferred that nice slow burn of them like being Hating shot each other. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i'm excited um <laughs> all right slash stella hates hate oh uh, yeah yeah I, I like I like that tension. Remember, I told, that's what I said last week in last week's episode. That whole like the primal, the arrogance. I guess is what I like. I like <laughs> I like male arrogance. I closed my notes. We're not doing very well today. We're that's fine. We well that's that's <laughs> fine because I have a fantastic note here. Um, when they were flying overhead. Grace was talking about the unkillable beast, and she's like, if it's so big, why can't we see it? Says Grace at three o'clock in the freaking morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> upon a dragon. Upon a dragon. Sky. In the middle of the ocean. At the, in Siberia. In Siberia, yeah. Why can't yeah. we see it? <laughs> like, come on, Grace. You know Grace. How, like, in D&D, like, certain races have dark vision and certain races yeah. just don't? I am always the character that thinks that my character should definitely be born with dark vision, and yet I can't. And I go like, okay, so what's in the room? And my DM always goes, um, well, to you, you see a murky blackness of nothing. And I'm like, <laughs> what? He's like, it's like two in the morning. And I'm like, but I'm, but I'm a mermaid. <laughs> I was going to say, you should have went with the drow. Yeah. I've been a dragonborn again. No dark vision. That just boggles my mind. A dragon. Um, and I am currently a triton, which is like a merman kind of yeah. thing. Again, from the depths of the ocean. And I can't see in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stay. You got to stay a couple, <laughs> couple feet. No, no, Under no. The... I went to a shop and I bought some goggles of night vision. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining that, like, the vampires are like, we can't see it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grace, the currently the human, is just going, what are we looking at? She's, Where like, making that, looking... that that face. You know when you're trying to squint and your face squinty, is... Squinty, face. Yeah. What? Like an old person trying to drive. Yeah, yeah, you can see like her front, her her like front teeth as she's like curled her lip up. I'm I'm making the face right now. Can you tell by my voice? What? <laughs> Good visuals yeah, for you. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, so, um, uh, I I made a note of um, okay. So what do we do now? And Xavier goes, we back away slowly, and I'm like, that's a great plan. We should stick with this plan. But then he ruins it by going, we should make a trap. And, I'm like, no. <laughs> and I'll be bait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah why does every great plan involve bait yeah it's i feel it's like, like we need some bait no we, we don't we don't need bait we need to have a plan like a proper plan with informal like information to be able to go in and know that we are making the right choices but no they're going in crazy blindly and just go we need to set a trap when, what are they scooby-doo <laughs> when i think of a trap and like the first time that i read it i'm thinking like okay a big box with a stick wedged underneath. <laughs> like trap. Yeah. You you pull the string and <laughs> caught it. Yeah. It, it's um <laughs> back, noose. You probably didn't have these commercials, but did did um in the nineties, did you have the Taco Bell commercials with the Chihuahua? No. No? Oh we had a whole line of Taco Bell commercials with a little Chihuahua. And there was um one for the promotion of the Godzilla movie. And he's sitting with his little box with the string, and he's going here, lizard, lizard, lizard. And I, I, I still say that when I see a lizard like at a at a uh, pet store, I'm like here, lizard, lizard. But then Godzilla like rounds the corner, and he's just standing there with his oh. little box. And they had a real Chihuahua actor in that too. There, I'll, I'll have to, I will find it on YouTube and send it to you. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, 
Yeah. So uh, the the brilliant idea is that they're going to attempt to lure the unkillable beast out of its cave, not knowing Mm -hmm. what it looks like, how big it is, if it's magic, if it's immune to anything. They know nothing. Yeah. They've just arrived on a mysterious magical island close to the North Pole that's just magically warm and tropical with like tropical plants and, and so far they can't see it they don't even know whether it's just a mid invisible it could be sat there watching them yeah and they would never know yeah yeah like like they're they're idiots you're just watching typical teenagers going this is a great plan we've got we got amber watching the boys now so it's like the invisible dude that just kind of sat in the- <laughs> <laughs> translucent yeah yeah he's just sitting yeah. <laughs> sitting be a creeper in the corner yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, then I think it is. Um, it's Macy. I've already forgot. Is it Macy? Yeah. Macy starts doing all the what ifs. Um, like, well, how, how? Why would we do this? Like, what if it's made of like diamond? What? What if? What if? What if? What if? And she starts like throwing out the most crazy, outlandish theories. And because Grace also has no idea, they all sound very probable, and she's just nodding along. <laughs> what if it has <laughs> tentacles? Yeah, what if, it's, what if it has, like, teeth that come out of its feet? I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, I was like, these sound like my kind of what-ifs. Sort of, like, back to the, like, what if I, I have a shellfish allergy <laughs> and I go into anaphylaxis whilst I'm fighting? What if I die because <laughs> of a prawn? What, what did you first read through, having no idea what was going to happen? What did you assume this thing was going to look like? Like, what picture did you have in your head? Because I, I totally had like a kraken or some type of like like a big one of the wargs from Lord of the Rings. Like I, I couldn't – those were the <laughs> two that were going on in my head. Like a big like scary wolf type creature um, and like a tropical sea creature that would come out of that little pool at the base of the, uh, of the cave. Well, honestly, I was kind of – thinking it was going to be a hoax that they were going to turn up and that the thing that they uh, they believed was going to be there just was nothing there was nothing there um because they had such little information to go on and everything about their world is based on like supernatural legends and myths and and things like that that i was like well maybe sometimes folklore does come up with some red herrings of things that never did exist and I kind of thought the unkillable beast was just kind of like the boogie monster, like where it didn't really exist. And they were going to, to turn up and something was bad was going to happen because they went on the trip, but not because they came into contact with this thing. And Grace was going to be all like, I told you so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I And I, I had that, uh, that thought as well that, you know, there was going to be... It, 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 it's like a fake horcrux you know I thought that they were going to mm-hmm. get there and it's like there's a sticky note like in the middle of the cave that says haha gotcha yeah, <laughs> yeah like somebody already had had killed it or it or it was just or it was just going to be a guy kind of like when you get introduced to the blood letter and it's just this like creepy old lady who lives in a cave that the thing that they were like psyching themselves up to come into contact with was either going to be nothing um or um kind of like gravity falls with like the fake monster that was just going to be like a taxidermy moose like uh-huh. with a kitten skull on it or something like it was going to be something really dumb that people had been scared of for months except and it didn't actually exist except it wasn't yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> well thankfully grace yeah. is is highly trained in paintballing so stupid <laughs> stupid sentence that was I was like yes Grace your papa did take you paintballing to prepare you for the day where you were a gargoyle and you needed to fight supernatural creatures yeah you stupid stupid girl she's like I can't I can't help but remember when I when my dad used to take me paintballing and maybe he knew something I didn't maybe he knew that I would need <laughs> this training someday I'm like honey have you ever actually no. been paintballing because it's not like real combat it's just screaming and Yelling, please don't shoot. Ow! It's like running it, getting hit in the bum. My butt. <laughs> I've never... Mostly getting muddy. I got so muddy. I, I've never just been... sitting in the mud. I've never done paintball um, because I'm afraid, but I've seen plenty of <laughs> people who have gotten done doing paintball in the welts, and that's why I won't do paintball. Uh, yeah. 
No, thank you. I'll I do. I'll get stick to some, some lovely welts and bruises from that. No, let's stick to laser the tag. Th- the thing is, I enjoyed the day, and I think that I would have enjoyed it more had I not had to wear a mask. The mask itself was terrifying for me. Like I felt very panicky the whole time, and this was before COVID, um, and I obviously didn't realize that putting something that secure over my mouth and my nose was going to make me panic like that. Yeah. That's a different kind of um, so mask, yeah. though. It's like, there; those are if, like big masks. It was like a gas mask. Yeah. If it felt, it felt like, I know that this thing in front of my eyes is transparent and I can see, but my brain was telling me I can't see. I'm blind. Yeah. <laughs> like wearing sunglasses when suddenly you're like, I can't see. It's too dark, and then you take your sunglasses off and go, ah, too bright. <laughs> yeah. That that moment. That was my entire hour of combat was just me going i can't see anything and i can't breathe yeah so Mm -hmm. did you think that their plan was a good one because i didn't no there are so many things that they first of all they sent they sent all the wrong people into the cave jackson would have been (laughs) fine but jackson could have went on in by himself macy could have gone in since her plan was to put it to sleep rather than lure it out of the cave what if it was already asleep and they go in waking it up? Yeah, Macy Jackson should have picked up Macy, carried her, faded in super duper quick because we already know he can do that. He did that holding Grace when they went to the blood letters. Mm-hmm. He could he could have faded her into the cave, checked to see if it was there, put it sleep, fade out. Yeah, like, had like you could have had like a fluffy the Cerberus kind of type deal. Yeah, where just, it's a three-headed, terrifying Staffordshire Bull Terrier. But actually, if you just put the harp on and play it, music falls asleep. It, it, this this could have all been avoided. It's all yep. But no, nope. They, they walk. They walk in. They actually walk in. Like they don't like sneak in. They walk in as if they own the place. Yeah. Like no. And they think that that's smart. <laughs> yeah. And they have zero information to go on at this point. Like, they don't know how big it is. They don't know what to attack it with. They don't know whether it's even real. They know nothing. And they're just walking in. And if you guys want to experience this for yourself, I highly recommend checking out the uh, the ASMR on our channel for the Unkillable Beast (laughs) Island. Because I, I very meticulously... Um, added in all of these sounds and the in the growls and the tropical kind of night sounds and yeah yep and as they're walking through the tunnel grace has the very smart sudden like realization that there's like some noises of clanging and jingling and she's like what kind of monster fights with chains <laughs> <laughs> you stupid idiot <laughs> why was that her first thought why why not Oh my god, has he got prisoners down here? Or oh, maybe we were wrong. Maybe he ha- is already imprisoned. <laughs> but no, she's imagining this monster doing like the whip flail with chains. <laughs> like he's doing double dutch <laughs> with chains. <laughs> Just fling it. And he's doing it ahead of time. Before anything else has even turned up in the cave, he's doing his, like, nunchuck training. Jingle, 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 jingle. Well, they said Maybe that he doesn't have chains. Maybe he's just doing care of the bells. Maybe he's just doing, like, a little ring-a-ling-a-ling. Well, that's what they said. Is They said that it's somewhere near the North Pole. It's Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not chains. Yes, it is. It's Santa. And- yeah. What if they it's went in? Santa. Santa is just like one of the giants from from Covet. Santa just comes out and he's like this big giant. He's like the final ho, boss ho, battle. Ho. He's evil Santa, but he's like ripped. He's still wearing like the <laughs> overalls, but he's just like ripped Santa. He starts swinging his chains around. That could be a yeah, whole like um like Father Christmas, like Santa from uh, the Legend of the Guardians. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, badass Santa. You definitely drive a Harley. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's weirdly that I'm sort of attracted to you and I don't know why <laughs> <laughs> I've been good Santa yeah. I promise <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and they're, they're also like they're walking through these like tunnels trying to get to this this unkillable beast and Grace is like and they're bones everywhere and they're definitely human bones I'm like how, how can you tell Grace have you been to a human anatomy class are you now a doctor like 
other than the skull, there are no other bones in the human body that look remotely human. You could do you people find bones in their garden and go, "Oh my god, someone died." They send it to like an anatomist and they're like, "Yeah, this is a pork shoulder." And they're like, "Oh, yeah, this is my mo- my mom. Last summer, dug up her garden and she found a whole dog mm-hmm. from where somebody had. Uh, or no, it wasn't. It was some dead puppy. It, yeah, somebody, someone buried their. It was like big too. It was like like German Shepherd sized skull. And she was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I, I dug up someone's pet." Oh <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. But yeah, human skulls are about the only. I mean, a human recognizable piece. Yeah, human like a a femur might be, you know, about. I mean, I guess you could look at a femur and say, you know, this is about human size. Pelvis. I did have a thought. I did have a thought whilst I wrote that that point, and then I think I forgot to add it. But uh, so, would there also be a reason why there aren't any dragon bones? Not because nobody sent in a dragon, but because the dragon bones would have ended up in a different place. (gasps) Oh, that's a good thought. Because they, if the dragon, if a dragon's killed, it'll go straight to the boneyard. Mm Hmm. Yep. Oh, very, very good thought. And here's here. Here's my thing. I have, an- I have another thing that I need to add very quickly. Oh, okay. To this, but it's to the spoilers. Okay. So carry on talking. Um, if it, if this thing is a, is like a legend, it's like you know, it's it's a nobody's sure if it even exists. Where are all these like missing people's reports of all these <laughs> people who have yeah. d- disappeared? Because I mean, I don't know. Apparently I just I, no one cares. Yeah, like, did nobody care about these people who went to kill the unkillable beast? And 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 does the unkillable beast, like, suffer any PTSD knowing how many people he's, he's splattered? Because he's, he's obviously, like, a, a sentient, still, you know, human-minded creature, Kinda. right? Like, he has... He has he's co- essentially a giant... Yeah. telepath dog that used to be a, a a human yeah so he should and this is the these are my, these are my issues with like some of the spoiler things that i want to mention like i have issues you have, you have the, with the i have continuity error issues <laughs> <laughs> well we will we will discuss more because i i have some more things that <laughs> that i would like to add as well so anyway okay. they 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 realize that the unkillable the beast, wall yeah, comes alive. yeah, the wall just moves, and you know, I I don't think that I can accurately depict the size of this thing because Grace describes it as being like what eighty stories, eighty high. stories, and yet also, have you ever seen something that big in front of you and still been able to explain its movements? Yeah, you would on, you wouldn't be able to see very much of anything because you would be an ant in comparison. Yeah. yeah. And she even like she even says like the dragons in comparison are like hummingbirds to it. So it's like Eiffel Tower size creature. Yeah. You wouldn't even be in able to In a cave. S- How big is this cave? <laughs> yeah, this I mean she, and she might be it, it fear might be making her exaggerate a little bit. Um Yes, but <laughs> yes, it was like this like spider, the sides of it like a dinner plate. <laughs> yeah, like, was it was it really though? I love when you when there's a situation like that where like you and like a friend or your spouse also go through the traumatic thing together, and you both are like when you explain the story to someone else, your your spouse or friend is like yeah yeah like they they're just agreeing <laughs> because they are yeah. also completely yeah. just blindsided by traumatized. Yeah, my phone. My phone is not my friend with that. Do you ever have like a spy, like a giant spider, or something where you need to like compare the size? To yes, it? and like, it looks I tiny. Look, I look around, and they're like, "Oh, <laughs> actually, that looks pathetic." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. My friend's gonna think I'm a pansy. <laughs> we uh, our wolf spiders here. Their eyes like are they? They have that reflectiveness, like a like oh, the glow. An, yeah. So I always make it a point to make sure that my phone light is on when I take pictures of them, because then you can see all of their little glowing <laughs> eyes. <laughs> little little <laughs> tricks. Some creepier. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you want to freak I somebody see. out. Genius. Um. So I know that you're not going to get my next note at all because it's so descript. But 
<laughs> during <laughs> during the battle or th- the battle during the fight with um, the unkillable beast, it smacks Jackson, smacks him, um, and and w- <laughs> just whacks him out of the cave. And I thought, you know, what would be really funny is since he's um, telekinetic and he can he can float, he can blimp. What if it just hit him and he was like a, a boomerang where? The unkillable beast <laughs> smacks him like yeet, and then Jackson just fl- like flies out of the cave and then <laughs> sp- comes back. But I pictured it like, um, have you seen that video of that woman being airlifted by the helicopter and her whole body is like spinning around really fast? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm expecting with like the Hulu adaptation that there's definitely going to be some gifts made from that scene. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> just. Uh, nope. <laughs> and then wax out the cave. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm going to. I'm going to stop right here. That way, nobody, f- f- nobody comments and is like, "Oh my god, the who?" Not Hulu. Hulu's Court of Thorns and Roses. Uh, oh. U- Universal is Crave. See, if, I don't. If I we don't pay attention, if we get it at all. Yeah. Everybody keeps talking about when the Crave movie's out, but it's they only. Universal has purchased rights, which only means that no one else is allowed to make it. But that doesn't mean that I mean it's going to make be made. Do yeah. you also get really frustrated with the people who like fan cast and go like, "This has to be Jackson and this has to be Hudson," and I'm like, "They are thirty years old, yeah. <laughs> ma'am. Sit down." <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I'm gonna say like they're probably going to choose somebody new that we do not know who they are, and then that's going to like. Uh, what's the word? Springboard their career. Like, exactly. They're going to be newbies to the to the fandom and to the cinematic world, and there is going to be probably like a fifty percent like ew no this is not who I imagined in my head. Meanwhile, there's going to be the people who are like yes yeah like Robert Pattinson. Yes. I, when I first saw him, I was just I I just like threw my arms up and I was like nope Mm-mm, that yeah. is that is not Edward no like now well, see I say the same about him Batman. Yeah, I, I think he did a good. Batman. He's not Batman, but then I haven't watched it, and he may change my mind. He will. It, he even even Mark when he saw it, he's like, okay, this is probably the best Batman. Like in terms of like him oh. playing the role, he did a great job. Okay, completely changes I've your perception. It. It's good. Um, I, so one of my favorite parts is when um, like they finally start realizing that this battle is not going to be won and grace is like we're in pieces jackson is depleted eden's wing is broken flint has a compound fracture macy's okay (laughs) 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 yeah she's not and and her herself grace has got a scratch on her either she's fine yeah yeah how does she know that flint has a compound fracture that's like that's why not just say his you, his legs broken? He's got a you. Do you, you not know? Like also, a compound fracture is when the bone comes through the, the top of the leg. Yeah, she she like, said you can see bone. That's when it's a compound fracture. She said that it looked like he had a compound fracture, so it either did or it didn't. Yeah, you can tell it's like somebody breaks a bone and there's blood. Yeah, that's the, compound. Okay, okay. Whereas when I when I broke my wrist, it was literally like a it might bruise in a few hours. <laughs> yeah, hurt like hell, but there was no outlying symptoms. <laughs> it's like oh, would you look at that? It's like oh, it's all puffy. That's uh, that's about it. Speaking of puffy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> puffy. <laughs> so I didn't even register this moment the first time I read it through. Because obviously it didn't have as much gravity. Now I'm reading it for the second time. I know what happens. So Xavier pushes Macy out of the way and takes the blow that was meant for her. Think about how much stronger Xavier is compared to Macy. And how much she would have been just jammed. Yeah, because she would she would have been marmalade. Yeah, Grace says that she hears like bones like crunching and like yep. something about like his skull like being like smacked. Yep. So yep. yeah, Macy would have been splattered. I mean Xavier was already pretty uh-huh. splattered. Yep. 
And if Macy had died, not only would it be fucking awful, traumatic, like everybody would be just destroyed, they would have no way of getting home. Oh, no, you're right. So Xavier was the best candidate, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, they, he, here's the thing. They just introduced him. Like, we're not in love with Poor him yet. Poor man. You know? Poor yeah. man. Like, he was he was an amazing love interest for Macy, and that was great for character growth, great for um, showing that werewolves aren't all bad. And, it, and it was, like, he's a really great character. Like, he wasn't but forced into the storyline. He was the goodest plot device. He was the goodest boy. He, he, was, was. he was a goodest boy. For a minute. Um, but yeah, he stopped Macy from dying. And that meant that not only did Grace and Macy manage to like keep being best friends and cousins and help each other throughout the rest of the story, but also that meant that Macy could get them home. And he also then provided another part of getting them home as well. Yeah. Which that we didn't read that part in, in this, did we? No. No. It, that'll be in next episode. Um, yeah. So Grace, you know, she she jumps out because uh, the unkillable beast is about to like... Also, Hudson's like, you stupid bin, get up and talk to him, you knobber. Yeah, he's he's the only one. And I like that he like drops to his like knees. Like, Thanks. Actually, yeah, he's like, please, like... Have you, have you ever had yeah. one of those moments where somebody is about to do something stupid and you just need them to listen and, and they won't and you just have to, like, do something dramatic to get them yeah, to... Yeah, and normally our explanation is way longer than it needs to be and in this case it was. Like, him begging her took so long that Xavier then died. Yeah. It's his fault. <laughs> no. It's like, fault. Well, yeah, he, it is, really, <laughs> because it wasn't, like, a sudden realization that that was the gargoyle speak, speaking in her head. Like, it clearly had happened a few times and he thought it was. Why did he take so long to go, I don't think that's you. At no point did he give those doubts to her because at every stage she was adamant that it was her own gargoyle that was talking. Which he probably heard because he can hear all yeah. of her thoughts. So he would have known that she didn't think that it was the unkillable it beast. Fault. It's a, <laughs> Hudson. It is all your fault. We love you, but you're you're you are speak responsible. First. Come on, speak, speak, speak sooner, dude. Communication, guys. This is what we keep saying. Biggest problem in YA: communication. <laughs> and so, yeah, all of the the comments that her her gargoyle had been saying this entire time, like no. "Don't die, don't die, um, leave, be safe," was actually him the whole time. Oh no. <laughs> And then when Which she makes me wonder, like, is he really like if he has those thoughts, why isn't he in control of his own actions? Because actually at no point did any of them go to attack him. Like That's if he true. just kind of like if he could just stood like stood there, they wouldn't have hurt him anyway. All of the things that they went to go and do were magical and would have been pointless. And he knew a gar he, he knew that a gargoyle was with him because he was directly communicating with Grace. So he had to have known. Yeah, and spoiler, spoiler, the person who it is would immediately know that that was another gargoyle. It's not like Grace talking to another gargoyle and not understanding how it's working. This person, who is the unkillable beast, has been a gargoyle for a thousand years plus. And she so has the experience of knowing what it means. And she turns into a gargoyle before they even walk in the cave. Like she gargoyles herself. So he would see her, see the horns yeah. and the wings and know. Yeah. But instead he just jumps off the wall. Com communications just out of the out of the window in this this chapter. <laughs> but um Grace jumps in front of him because he's about to like mutilate xavier's body further and she screams no at him and I, <laughs> no means no yeah his, his he's better at consent than most men i know because he immediately mm -hmm. stopped and like listened i imagine him to like like sit like a dog like he plopped his butt Does down and just <laughs> cocked his head like hmm? yes what <laughs> D does confused <laughs> yeah exactly i i seriously pictured him to have like that personality where he just kind of like sat like a dog and like waited to. Yeah. And then when she continues talking, he tilts the other way. Like, uh, you give heart, give heart stone. <laughs> oh, that was the most heartbreaking thing. 
Yeah. And then Jackson, the bloody shithead, is like, you, well, you got to take it, Grace. What a knob! You got you to gotta kill it. You got to take it. You gotta, yeah, take it. He's offering it. He's committing suicide for how, you, Grace. Take how, it. How big would it be? If this thing is like Eiffel Tower size, how and how would they get it back? I don't know. I don't know. But also, if he was willing to give it, would that actually kill him? Would that be kind of like... A dragon giving its heart? Yeah. I don't know. Tracy. Tracy. Answers, please. Tracy. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey, Trace. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, they eventually work out that they, they cannot set free this unkillable beast. The chains and the the cuffs of the, the manacles, they, they just can't. Foreshadowing. So, so they decide to leave him, um, and as they're walking out, they're talking about the trial, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> that's you today." Get back and do that. Oh, and uh, all of you are pretty much dead. <laughs> I mean, Grace could have got herself back. It would have been a very long flight, but she could have. She's the only one that's like, and, and I mean, Jackson. No, he couldn't have floated. He's, he's pretty much dead and hudson could have gripped onto grace because we already know he can do that he's also he, he he just floats anyway he just he's just wherever she is yeah so yeah they could have run off and left everybody at the on the island and <laughs> sent an airlift later <laughs> yeah but yeah so yeah like they, they kind of got like they've got nothing left and then they're like oh we have to make it back to catmere to go and play football <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, what? Well, that's, that's what Macy's Macy's pep talk. She's like, I know we lost Savior, but now we need to do what's right. What's important? By getting Grace back to school to play her sports game. <laughs> <laughs> it's so silly. It's so silly. Oh. But yeah, so she's, she has like the pep talk of a lifetime. This like she is broken. She is distraught. She's like emotionally burned out. Um, like her like love interest is dead and uh, she just has this pep talk of a lifetime and I'm like woo go Macy and then she basically threatens them and says oh by the way guys I don't know whether this is going to get us to school or turn us into a thousand beams of light I don't know (laughs) I guess we'll find out (laughs) yeah and I was like well to be honest in terms of deaths a thousand beams of light doesn't sound too bad no not 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 like Xavier getting his skull crunched it is preferable to any of the deaths that we get in the entire court, like, book as well. It's, you just, it's Harry Potter. You just keep talking about that little ball of light. <laughs> <She'll come around>. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, and um, and based on the last sentence, they're dead, right? Yeah, totally. The dead, dead. Like, the way that it's, <laughs> it's just like, and then we just burst into the sky <laughs> as a thousand beams of light and i'm like oh they did it's very it's very similar to my i haven't mentioned my book in like a long time i i, I keep forgetting that i wrote a book um but it's like do when, you though yeah do you? <laughs> yes i have i've had to forget about it for a little while because i've been so freaking busy but guys i wrote a book called the channel um and you can find it on all of the book websites any of them all of them no matter where you are it is there but um buy her book buy my book please the channel by starla moore uh but no when when vivian and jc um first use the the rayatron on earth and they just kind Mm -hmm. of like poop that yeah they just of existence they just poof out of existence and she like describes it as being sucked through a vacuum hose like a spider being sucked through a vacuum yeah. hose and it's just like burning her retinas through her eyelids so it which was a very unpleasant experience and i'm picturing macy's to be a, like more more magical like you're just like floating as a little fuzzy like (laughs) (laughs) yeah and the and the way that like grace is describing that whole like ritual as well it's very like sacrificial yeah (laughs) like someone gonna die yeah um i'm surprised there aren't any more black candles out a nice little like uh, what's the word pentagram you know there is none of that none of that she just has a single crystal and all of a sudden she can bend all of the elements to her will how how 
powerful is Macy? <laughs> because she learned that spell this morning and has never practiced it. Um, the thing is, I think that Macy is, I think that she is powerful, but she doesn't think that she is. Therefore, she second mm-hmm. guesses herself. And she she often forgets, like, oh, w- wait, yeah, I, I can do this. I, I, yeah, I, there must be a reason why um, Uncle Finn is the headmaster as well. Like, he, he can't just be a mediocre warlock. No. So maybe there is, like, a genetic thing in there. Um, because also, like, her mother was part of the wizard's, like, circle or whatever it was, wasn't didn't she? She wasn't... Oh just a plain old jane who lived in a cottage and baked cookies she she was a prominent figure in their society yes so maybe genetics definitely play a part and she just isn't aware of it because her dad is always teaching other students and not her he might also want her to stay separate from that life to to protect her maybe you want yeah to- i was like did like suddenly remembered that she's like yeah Gwen taught me this spell this morning, so I'm going to give it a crack. <laughs> and I'm like, what? We might die, but what else? It's worth it. We need to get off this island because we need to go and play badminton. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> croquet. We're going to play croquet. <laughs> croquet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to get into spoilers? Yeah. All right. Sad sad wolf howl if, if I was able to find it. <laughs> oh, I'm, here's my here's my plan. I'm just going to take my normal wolf howl and I'm going to try to slow it down. Ooh. Yeah, pitch pitch shift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So my first note was that you know Cyrus obviously is the one who sent the unkillable beast or um, the the gargoyle king to the island. Mm-hmm. Of all the places he could have sent him, because I mean he's he's threatened to he's put Jackson and Hudson into like crypts a physical dungeon yeah and and macy's mom is in a like macy's mom macy's got mom it going on except she's he, she doesn't because no. she's emaciated and <laughs> cur- 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 curled emaciated in. <laughs> <laughs> emaciated um yeah she's like curled in a corner of a of the cell like yeah um but the Unkillable Beast is on a nice island. He's, he's got, got a destination holiday. <laughs> yeah, he's got a nice little pool. Like, if I'm going to be locked anywhere for eternity, I think that I'll go with the nice, warm, tropical island. I mean, it, it sounds like Cyrus wasn't super committed to doing anything too terrible to this. Yeah. If you could to choose your prison, your ideal prison where you had to spend the rest of your days, it could be anywhere, but you know that you can never leave. What would it be? Uh, is it going to be strictly indoor or do I have the option to go can out? Be, it can be anything, but it will be an isolated version of whatever you choose where like you can't get out or you can't leave or the door's locked or it's got a moat. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I, I wouldn't mind being like in house or on house arrest in like one of those like Beverly Hills mansions. Yeah, but like more off the beaten trail, like one that overlooks uh-huh. like a city where I can like see activity down below. I can I can observe people and not be uh-huh. because then if you if you're alone for too long, you you do go crazy. Yeah, you're driven to insanity in a very short amount of time. Mark and I were just talking about this and I think he said it's like like 4 days. Show. <laughs> yeah, you start losing yourself. You start be, you know, if, if if you have like no pet or anything to talk to, you you do start to mm-hmm. lose lose yourself. But um, yeah, I, I think that as long as I could observe humans and I have the ability to like turn on a TV, just just a, a nice house with a little bit of nature, maybe like a pool, I, I'd be cool with. Yeah, because I could I still get library. online. Yeah, a library. Library would be really cool. And just like you could like just go. I yeah, I can't do anything with my life, but I may as well get smart. It's the prison thing that we talked about in the last episode, where if you went to yeah. jail. Yeah, but I think prison books uh, leave a lot to be desired. desired. Yeah. Um, whereas if it's like, you know, like Beauty and the Beast's library, I'd be down for that. Especially if it had a magic mirror that I can just go, take me to Paris. <laughs> Do we get Amazon? That'd be great. 
Yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Yes. We prime things. Yeah. Get, Just maybe, like, I, I know that I want, like, if I'm stuck in this prison, I want next day delivery. <laughs> what about, like, VR headsets? Because then if we did, like, <laughs> yeah, we, we, that would be socializing. You could just VR with people, and it would be almost the same thing. Yeah. I think I would be fine. I'm, I'm introverted yeah. enough that I think I would be totally fine not ever seeing anybody again. Yeah. So. Um, so, my note yeah, this, is... Now we know the her is the blood letter and that he is Grace's grandfather. Yes. Did it change the way that you read the chapter? No, because I don't think that Tracy knew that the unkillable At the point when she wrote it. Yes. I don't. I think that she okay. knew that he would be an important gargoyle, possibly the gargoyle king. But I do not think that she was aware that she would later make him Grace's grandfather. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think that when she wrote the blood letter, I don't think that the intention was to make the blood letter her grandmother either. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So it did not. Yeah. Just the way that he was talking like must save her. Wolves are bad. So I was like, oh, did something happen to the blood letter that involves wolves? Oh. Because if anything, he would be attacking the vampires. Huh. Yeah. Strange. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe it, maybe it was supposed to be foreshadowing for what is to come in the next chapters with um, the wolves pretty much being the reason that Grace and Jackson's mating bond gets split. Yeah. Maybe it was just a plot device again. When um when Grace was just dis- describing Jackson actually he was actually dying. Like she felt that he was dying. She could feel it. He was wan. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wan. That's how she put she said he looked wan. W A N. Oh. Go on. <laughs> wan. <laughs> I've never used that word in my life. No. Wan. Oh you, honey, no. you're looking quite wan today. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like she could feel him dying. So it's clearly an actual bond, like, but maybe it's more like a codependency bond than actual love. Because the way that they interact with each other isn't very much, like, it isn't very romantic, actually. Yeah. At all. Like, if I think about it, like, they don't even really act like best friends around each other. They kind of act like the, like, we're in a relationship because our parents kind of made us. Distance is weird. Distance is already, uh, at this point in the story, I don't even feel a lot of connection between Grace's descriptions of Jackson. Like, if I were, if I were writing a story from my perspective going into something where we would almost inevitably die my focus Mm -hmm. would be on my partner primarily and she's just kind of like she's all over the place like she's she's not relying on him at all she's like i don't know it's it's just not how you would describe two people that are absolutely in love with each other going into a situation where they are aware that they might both be killed yeah yeah, she does. She doesn't set, like have that like desperation of saving him. He doesn't really have that really? desperation of saving her at this in this one. I mean, he's said several times no, like I'll just, protect he you. He pushes her out. He pushes her out of the way rather than making sure that she was never put in harm's way in the first place. The, the smart thing to do would have been to have her wait outside of the cave, and yeah, because she has the disadvantage out of everybody. He should have went in. Yeah. But then she turned out to be the lucky chip, so... Yeah. He's rubbish. But yeah, um, so my final point was that I'm glad that Xavier is a werewolf. Because if it was a dragon, the bones would have been taken to the dragon boneyard. So they wouldn't have had access to the body to be able to use it. And if it was a vampire, they also desiccate after 24 hours, which is fucking horrific. Oh, yeah. So, no, no, like, comfort for the for Xavier's family, who we never hear about. Like, no, they they would never even known that he had went to this island. 
Like, oh, and can you imagine tearing the par- telling the parents how he died? Because they're going to ask, and they're like, oh, well, we went against the unkillable beast. Like, w- the, w- it's like, you stupid children. It's in the description. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you couldn't even really tell them that it was worth fighting for because the werewolves are in cahoots with Cyrus. Yeah. It, it, he, the, Xavier's death was a pointless death. It was... It was not justified. It was not one of those things where where he could have been like, did we do good? Did we get him? Yeah, Xavier, we yeah. got him. You did good. No, he didn't do good. He did bad. Yeah. They shouldn't have gone in the cave at all. <laughs> no, no. It, this, it was, it was a, a pointless thing that forever impacts Macy's character. Um, and and we see that at the start of Covet when she dyes her hair black and her personality completely changes. St- yeah. But, well, guys. Well, we have those chapters to look forward to. I know, right? We've got, we have, yeah. oh my goodness. I don't even know how we're going to structure the episodes with the final Lou Dares match. I think that that should just be one. Mm-hmm. Because it it's it's so long, but there's no good way to break it up because we're not going to do a play by play of the Ludares match. <laughs> so, oh no, no, we'll we'll probably next episode we'll probably cover quite a few chapters. I would I would assume either yes. that or the episode after this. But guys, thanks so much for listening. Um, we will be resuming ASMRs soon. I've had a Woo. very busy last few weeks, so um, but I, to, that ended today. So all of my obligations are now at minimum capacity, which means I have the time to dedicate to more crave-related stuff. So yeah, going to be lots of fun. I need, I do need some ideas for some ASMRs. So mm-hmm. feel free to post. Add on. them to the YouTube. Add them, add them to the YouTube comments. Yeah, yeah. Comment on this video on YouTube. And if you're listening via any of our apps, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the only place that you can get our ASMRs. Um, you you can actually interact with us there, whereas on Spotify, you can't exactly comment on anything. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.